Okay, uh, we got an 8,500 square footer today. Uh, we're gonna walk around, point some of the problems. And uh, Tyler here, he's at the end of his training and he's actually writing the whole report. So that's pretty bad. You know, not very many people in their first year get to write a report on an 8,000 square footer. So let's uh, show you some of the problems that we found on this one and give him a checklist. All right. Cool. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. All right. Josh I'm here says, for the food. Yeah, Josh says he's here for the food. <laughs> we always buy lunch when a property is this big. All right. So right here, laser pointer request, but you can see we need caulking improvements in between light fixtures and the here veneer stone one of the last houses i did you could see where it was full dimensional stone regular stone and how you tell the difference between full dimensional stone and abs adhere veneer stone is the actual depth of the windows you can see how these are flush that means this stone is installed exactly like stucco so you can see the overhead flashing and it's flush so you are going to have a weep screed at the bottom or see a weep screed at the bottom there so you need to seal all the points around hose bibs doorbells light fixtures and around the windows installed exactly like stucco we're calling this out too i don't know if they're going to change it but you need uh, um, no wood to ground contact this is just going to rot over a period of time and then also at the top here you need overhead flashing on any transition here because water is just going to roll down the hardy get behind this transition and travel down the pillar so you definitely want to repair that too as well josh spotted this one uh where the conduits pulled loose at the the gate motor over here the here veneer stone is too close to the ground you need a at least a two inch clearance from the ground a hard surface and this is actually kind of hard to determine between hard surface because it's just sand and stone so but technically i'm going to go two inches up it is underneath the patio but if you get any wind driven rains water is going to make it to that adhered veneer stone next spot is actually right above here technically you need overhead flashing for the garage door but since we're underneath a underneath like a patio, I'm not going to call it out or stress it because water is not going to make it over here. We're also gonna call out that the wood to ground contact around the garage door as well, the trim, because water can easily travel across here and hit this and it will rot out over a period of time and also a perfect area for termites. So another spot right here, they mortared instead of used caulking around the exterior of the panel boxes. This will work in time, but this mortar will eventually break loose. So we recommend for elastomeric caulking around the exterior of the panel boxes and they just didn't do it on this one at all. The reason why uh, the mortar breaks, it's because the these pipes expand and contract at a different rate with the sun and the heat so the caulk the mortar breaks but the caulking does not the does not it moves with the siding so that's the reason why we recommend for caulking next spot was actually where the hardy comes down and rests on top of the stone you actually need you need a uh, flashing over the this projected trim we know we don't have it because we saw it across the balcony and I'll show you that later in the video and He's just checking for uh, gas leaks around uh, the gas meter So I'm sure there is no flashing over the transition from hardy or fiber cement board to the AS AVS so um, It's all along this whole side of the structure. So we need overhead projected trim <laughs> flashing at transitions there you go next thing you want to pay attention to these are crepe myrtles crepe myrtles grow really fast here in houston and you can see that they are right next to the service entrance wires or the service wires for this area so you you want to think big picture you're not always just focusing on the property so know your trees a little bit and you can see that these are just going to grow really fast and they're already touching the uh the electrical wires in the backyard on the back here, we saw a few pieces of the fiber cement board. Um, the fiber cement boards pulled loose. And then right here, you can see we don't have any flashing at the transition of the AVS. 
and right up here if you can see maybe I'll get a little bit closer you can see my laser pointer up there you need kick out flashing there is a little bit of piece of kick out flashing but just learned at EDI that it has to be projected four inches so that little piece is not enough to divert the water properly away from the structure next area we spotted was over here uh, it was really really soggy so we're going to recommend for better drainage in the backyard this will become an issue very quickly next area over here we wrote this up as poor drainage as well uh, there is a surface drain there it's probably clogged but it's it's pretty roughed up over here so we're easily going to call this out too as well so at the top up there where the projected trim is you actually need flashing above this projected trim too as well yes that's underneath the soffit area but you still need flashing here and then also there's a few spots in the front that are a little bit more exposed next area is here you want to pay attention to the weep screeds the weep screeds are clogged in this area and it will not distribute water properly if water makes it behind the avs so they need to clean the ports and you can see it's actually like that all the way around a little sloppy with the mortar and it made it behind all the uh the weep the weep screed here at the base and we need to clean them kind of a nuisance home inspector call out but it is required if you have three or more steps you're required to have a handrail so we're going to say that there's no handrails on this property also another call out it's kind of funny but uh, the kitchen is not installed yet but it's actually installed at an angle so we yes the countertop guy can come in and make this look level but we just let our client know be like hey this uh, is at a level and they want to raise it up not a home inspection thing but we try to inform them with absolutely everything on a brand new build like this another call out is uh, right here we have some mortar improvement right there right there and then coming underneath you need, we wrote up mortar improvement over here on the ABS and then Tyler spotted this earlier you got uh, oops it's loose stone you got a loose stone all right in the attic space they didn't change the filter at all you can see it's damaged and dirty and coming in this happens a lot in new builds I mean, almost every new build. as well so easy call outs and uh, we're gonna you can we're gonna head that way next uh, to check that out Let's check out and see what's over there on the uh, coil side they have a um, capped secondary drain line they do have a float switch but you still need the secondary drain line and then the the pan drain line actually travels up so we need to re-slope the pan drain line this will not drain out properly and I uh, opened up the hatch here I just got a lot of sheetrock and stuff blown in my face so I didn't record it but the coils are dirty as well the plumbing stack doesn't have a, a proper slope there's actually a negative slope that way so if rainwater makes it down the plumbing stack it's just going to rest over there and it can uh, eventually leak this is why you want to go to areas you can't see we had a water heater we had a lot of faucets not producing hot water and you can see there's no power to this water heater and uh, the gas is shut off and there's not a proper path so you should have a a walkway or a pathway to get to this water heater so you can service it easily if uh, needed I also want to mention that you can see the pans not even properly positioned either so we need this water heater to be serviced and electricity brought to it so we can get it operational uh, we have a um, touching ducts and then ducts turn too sharply over there so uh, easy easy call outs easy spots keep an eye out for that when you're inspecting here at the other tankless water heaters and you can see there's no condensate drain line if the flue goes straight through the roof it's uh, required to have one also the pan isn't properly positioned when I came into the water heater it was beeping and flashing error code so I went ahead and plugged it unplugged it and plugged it back in and we're gonna see if that resets it if it doesn't then uh, I'm gonna have to come back up here and check again to see if it if it works but I guess we'll find out because we're gonna go through and test all the hot water again where we didn't have it other things we call out is the um, damaged flooring and then coming around the corner here we went ahead and said this was loose right here the hand the stair rail you can see easy spot to smash your fingers and this is glass 
a little trim board right here will actually secure that in place. We call out uh, the lights showing it, but the actual window is broken right here. And then the cracked and broken glass. We have that in a few of the bedrooms too as well. The balconies, we have some damage fiber cement board. We run all of the faucets for a while to see, and we'll run the infrared to see if we get any leaks in this area. That's the best place for it to leak. So we ran these for a while and then we're missing backflow preventers. So anywhere you can operate a faucet and let it run for a while on a balcony or a deck, I always do that to, just, just to see if it's leaking. I'm only gonna hit this uh, one time because all the bathrooms are pretty much exactly the same and they all have the same issues. So they didn't uh, caulk and seal around uh, some of the fixtures. The diverters aren't functioning properly. So whenever we're running the shower, the, the shower sprayer won't run off or the shower head won't turn off. And then also over here in the corner, uh, missing grout too as well. This sink, this was actually the only sink, but you can tell it's clogged and uh, um, the hole in it, just slow draining the sink. So a lot of, a lot of fun finds. Catching some open neutrals. Let's see. Oh yeah, it's open neutral. Another find we had was um, we had some pretty low water pressure coming out of all the faucets in the master bathroom. So writing that up. But one thing that we like to do is we always load test the shower pans. So this is why I like to wear waterproof shoes. Uh, I can walk across this about an inch or two of water and not get any water on my feet. But also this is a controversial thing with home inspections. Some home inspectors do not recommend doing it because if the, the drain does leak, you're gonna cause damage to the property, right? So this is a brand new build and uh, Brand new build or not brand new build, if this is a really good catch you can find for your clients. I mean, a shower, a shower pan this size, I don't even know how much it costs, but bare minimum on a normal shower pan, you're looking at 1500 bucks to fix it. Because they have to remove all the tile, fix the shower pan underneath it. So our company, we do this test every time. We are using a piece of paper this time uh, because our shower pan stopper will not fit this drain right here. One more quick tip, if you are ever load pet testing a shower pan, stop what you're doing and just take the time and up, update your report. Do not leave the room as you do this, especially with just a piece of paper stopping the shower. You will flood the bathroom and flood the house and you will be paying for it. So do not leave a room with while load testing a shower pan. Uh, we'll call out other things such as the, the waterfall, uh, countertop, I can say it, uh, is not flush to the ground. And then also you can see the the range hood is crooked and there's some grout improvements that need to happen over here. And the uh, final thing that we like to do is do an infrared scan at the very, very last thing because it's after you flushed all the toilets, you ran all the water through the structure. So this is the best time that you're going to find any type of water leaks or from the plumbing or water stains. And then right here, this is right underneath the master shower. And you can see that that shower pan is not currently leaking today, which is good. All right, we're wrapping this one up. Um, found a lot of really good stuff, big stuff and little stuff. And then also uh, um, a yeah, good training day for Tyler. Get to see the routine always stays the same. And I had something else to say, I forgot. Oh yeah, we're going to Chewy's. That's that's a spot where you, you get cheese on cheese. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you like this content, please like and subscribe and please always. Yeah. That that's what I meant.